we've been making a mistake. We're not thinking tactically about any of this stuff. We're reaching an understanding that we've already had years ago, which is that there have to be consequences for negative actions or people will just continue doing the worst they can get away with. That is true for normal people, but you have to understand that white Western society is not comprised of, of many normal people. They're a mixed bag, but the ones at the top and the ones in the majority are not normal. What I mean is that simply making it difficult for them to do these things to black people is not going to stop them. It wasn't easy for them to steal the land from the Native Americans. It was easier than working, but it wasn't easy for them. They faced resistance. One of the reasons that they developed better uh, guns and rifles over, the time, over time was because of that. I mean, many Native Americans that saw that this was an invasion early on, um, they resisted. It wasn't necessarily because um, they had a concept of land ownership. It was because they had a concept of power. Who was going to run stuff? They figured that these folks were going to hurt them, and they were right. Now, there was no amount of resistance from Native Americans that could teach white folks to stop what they were doing. They were not capable of learning that what they were doing was wrong. Cut it out. They, they could not learn this lesson. You're dealing with a society of narcissists that are incapable of learning that when they do something, it's wrong. Now, many of you have failed to understand the depths of that. Nonetheless, many of you also are failing to understand the, uh, the, the tacticality that they employ. They don't, um, they don't ask each other to brag and talk about killing niggers. The Ku Klux Klan does not have their radio shows and say, look, what are you doing for the cause of white supremacy? How many niggas have you killed? How many niggas have you lynched? Because now you go to prison for it. You don't do that. Their women aren't sitting up and saying out in public or on cameras, if you aren't out there killing, killing these niggers for robbing us at ATMs and things like this, you're not a real white man. They're not saying dumb stuff like this because they're not trying to feed each other to the prison system. Now, if you're going to do some of these things, you know what they do? They infiltrate law enforcement. That's what they do. I want you black folk to understand the FBI did a report on this. They did an investigation from the 90s going into 2006. They did the report, submitted it to Congress in 2006. Congress chose not to act on it because they were more focused on brown international terrorism than they were on white domestic terrorism. And look what it got us. That's white folks for you. They infiltrated law enforcement and now we're dealing with the effects of this. This has been going on. The infiltration now was too deep because they started the investigation in the 90s. So we're, they, we're sure that the infiltration of law enforcement had already begun. That's in the 90s. We're talking 24 years later. Now, that means that some of the people that were being investigated back then are almost to retirement age at this point. Let that sink in. Retirement age. I think the elder McMichael's name is Travis, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember if he's Gregory or Travis, but I'm assuming that the elder is Travis. Well, anyway, the older must be McMichael. I'm not even calling him Mr. out of respect. My bad. I shouldn't even said that. The older bastard. Former law enforcement was also seen at a Klan rally. And a neo-Nazi rally. They had the symbols of both at that rally. This guy is a white supremacist. Best believe nobody ever said to him in public, how many niggas have you killed? He didn't have to brag about it anyway. Should his cases be looked at? Yes, he probably has um, framed a bunch of black folks at this point. 
and it is this should be called into question. But by the same token, I want you to realize you're going on live streams and panels and, and going back and forth in comment sections, asking each other, what have you done? What have you done? It's like you're asking each other to brag about either planning to kill white folks in the future or having killed white folks in the past, either one of which will get you thrown into prison for life. If you are asking another black person to confess to planning something that is illegal, or having done something that is illegal, you don't have to make a deal with any white authorities. You're already helping them out and you're not getting paid to do it. Dummy, that's not tactical. Now, I'm not going to tell anybody to do anything that's going to get them thrown into prison. Morally speaking, I don't have an objection to any of these retaliations. Morally speaking. But I'm talking about the law here. Stop trying to tell each other to go out and kill white folks and then talk about it as if, you know, to try to prove that you did it. Uh uh. No, 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 no. And I will say this Mr. Fantastic had one valid point black on black crime's not always solved. However, if uh, there is someone fingered for the crime, that person will go to prison. And that's where the difference lies. The cops can't always catch the killers in a black on black crime scenario. But if they can catch them, they will catch them and they will take them into jail and then they'll go to court. And then the bailiffs will put them on a bus and ship them off to an actual prison. That's the difference if they can be identified. But if they cannot be identified. Of course, it's unsolved. So no, don't use black on black crime to try to take our attention away from the Ahmaud Arbery case, Mr. Fantastic. On the flip side, those of you that are detractors of him need to understand that he's got a valid point that, that a crime being black on black is not a guarantee that the killer will be caught. And we do have a problem with a no snitching code. We need to work on that. If it's about a revolution, that's when you need a no snitching code. If it's just a nigga crime, you don't need a no snitching code. You need to rat them out right off the bat. If you don't know who did it, you don't know. But if you know, I saw him do it. That's what you do. You see, when somebody black kills another black person, that's treachery. That's why you should be in a rush to, if you know who did it, you should be in a rush to snitch them out to the authorities. This rat bastard race trait of ours is the one that committed that murder. And you should say it like that to the white authorities. Because see, they understand that they have to take out your traitor trash for you. I didn't say trailer trash. I said traitor trash. Your treacherous trash. Now they got to be, at this point, they have to clean the community of the race disloyal rat bastards. Because we got them. But don't make no bones about this. Don't get this twisted. We got brothers out there trying to stick their chests out and one-up each other. What have you done? What have you done? What are y'all supposed to do? Confess the crimes that'll get you thrown in prison? You also got sisters, especially if they're attractive or they think they're attractive, that are willing to sit up there with their names and faces on camera, on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, talking about you should be out there killing these motherfuckers because for, for killing these black men. You black men ain't... As if to tell you that they not going to validate your manhood until you get your manhood locked up in prison for life. That's pretty much what they saying. So what if, sisters, if you're saying stuff like that, even if you mean well, if you're saying stuff like this, you're actually telling black men, take your testicles and either cut them off and hand them to me. Or cut them off and hand them to the white man. Either way. Lose your testicles. You're only willing to sexually validate these men. In the event that they get themselves locked up away from you and you don't have access to them. That's it. You're still pretty much telling black men celibacy, black men, and that's all you. You're pretty much telling them to pick the celibacy. You can be celibate in the same room with me while I tell you that you ain't no man. Because something you had nothing to do with occurred and you didn't go and get yourself locked up in prison. Or you can practice celibacy over there in the prison with a bunch of other men and some of them are going to try to rape you. That's what you're saying. No, no, and I, and I know I got to bring it back to sex, but I do have to bring it back because a lot of what you're doing, you're not admitting that you're bringing it back to sex or the lack of it. 
So I got to address this. And I'm not saying that every sister that says this has an intention to get Brother Stone in prison. But if you're that stupid, you might as well have done it intentionally. You're that dangerous. Stop black folks, period. Start thinking tactically. Stop asking each other to confess to dumb stuff. This is what is a good idea. Actually, no, it's not a good idea. You can't infiltrate law enforcement. It's already been infiltrated by white supremacists. You join law enforcement, guess what? You can't be a Black Panther and a law enforcement officer. Because if you are, even though the Black Panthers are not a threat to the law and order in general, what will happen is they will bring up that you are a Black Panther and the cop that's going to discover this and bring it up was looking at your affiliations because they were trying to take attention away from theirs. This way you never find out that they were part of the white knights of the Ku Klux Klan or members of a white citizens council or something like that. That's what happens. See, they didn't just infiltrate law enforcement, they infiltrated business as well. You folks need to understand and realize. You folks need to get this through your, your thick skulls. You need to repatriate. You can't infiltrate law enforcement you cannot necessarily infiltrate business. It takes money to infiltrate business. It's been systematically kept out of our hands. They're going to make sure you don't infiltrate law enforcement if you have any kind of pro-black. They will make sure of this. There's more. You must also understand that the, the, entire, the, the entire U.S. is aimed against you. Morally speaking, you wouldn't be wrong for starting a race war, but tactically speaking, there's no tactic that's actually going to win at this point. If I knew about it, I couldn't say it here on, on, um, uh, on YouTube because then the tactic would be nullified even if I knew one, but I don't. Leave the United States. And as I've already said, Islam is a solution. Hijra, meaning repatriation, is already what part it is included in Islam. And yes, if you are Muslim and you are capable of leaving the United States, you're required to do it. That's the truth. Now, most of them ain't capable. Again, that comes down to money. But if you got the money, you're required to leave. If you have the means to leave, you're required to. If you can't leave, then you just can't. It's not your fault. But you got to start thinking tactically, black folks. And right now, you're just not. Some of y'all up here trying to justify the ones that shot Ahmaud Arbery. Some of you were trying to make a paint Ahmaud Arbery as having committed a crime, even though he didn't commit one at that particular time. But you'll still say he didn't deserve to die, and he did not. The point is that what I don't hear enough of is a detailed blame of the McMichaels. He did not commit a crime. The older McMichael knew the law, should have known the law. Ahmaud Arbery uh, was cornered and he fought for his life and he got killed. Was it dumb for him to ch charge an armed man? Yes, but he was confronted by two armed men. That's the problem. They were coming up to him. So it's not like he had some right way to go that he could have taken in order to stay alive and stay free. He, if he had been stopped and he stayed there, waited for the cops. The McMichaels would have blamed him for a crime he did not commit. And because he had previous, because he had priors, he would have been uh, convicted on their word. An ex-law enforcement DA investigator of some type versus a black man who didn't do anything that time, but had priors. He would have been thrown in prison for something he didn't do. And I'm going to be honest with you. I myself, I think I'd rather die than that. So stop trying to justify this. Don't even, don't, it, do not try to say that the McMichaels were just doing their job. No, they weren't. The McMichaels were rat bastard animals, murderers, both of them. They didn't think that he had committed a crime. They didn't care that he did not commit one. That's what the issue was. So, no, I'm sorry, y'all. But at the end of it all, uh, y'all on two opposite ends. Because on one hand, some of you are saying that Ahmad never did anything wrong in his life. That's not true, as far as I know. 
But on the other end, some of y'all acting like Ahmad was out there trying to case the place to burglarize it, and he wasn't, and he didn't take anything from there. The truth is somewhere in between, and that truth is they did not do anything because of previous burglaries in the neighborhood. They did what they did because they saw a black man in their neighborhood and they felt like he didn't belong on some more white supremacist stuff. So they cornered him and they killed him. That's what happened. And truth be told, someone has even said that there was uh, an investigator named McMichael in one of Ahmad Arbery's previous charges. That skews everything right there. The, McMi the black line to take is that whatever Arbery did before, he was not doing at that time. The McMichaels broke their own people's laws to kill him. And one of them is affiliated with the Klan. End of story. That's it. That's the black party line to toe. Not that Ahmad was always innocent, but he was innocent at that time and they weren't. And that would be enough to get a black person killed or thrown in prison. So that, that should be enough to get these white folks thrown in prison and then killed by the state with the death penalty. First degree murder. That's what it takes. That's what we need to start saying. Stop talking about... Um, First off, stop talking about staying in the United States if you have a choice. If you don't have one state, but if you have a choice, fit the guck out. I've been saying that. Some of y'all think, well, what, I ain't nothing there for me in Africa. Well, guess what? And Africa white men are not going to sit up here and murder you in the streets because you're black. That's not going to happen. And then they walk off and get away with it. They're going to go to a nasty third world prison if they do that. They don't want to go there. You understand? Some of y'all want to sit up and say, well, you know, I could go to, what about Scandinavia? Well, if they do that to you there, they're going to go to a nice cushy prison. I don't think you guys get it. I don't think you all understand. You're going to face this again and again and again, no matter what you do. There's not some right way to get out of this unless you live separately from white folk. And have as little to do with them as possible. And if you have the means to leave the United States, leave the United States. In Colombia, they're not killing black men just for being black. In Brazil, black cops are killing black favela boys for being black. But a lot of us still want to go to Brazil. So why don't we look at other places around the world? It ain't all got to be Africa, but we need to start looking at the places, those of us who can leave. And we need to stop expecting that there's some, you know, right way uh, to get out of this while staying in the United States. Even if you build all black towns and settlements, the first thing you have to have is defense. And the minute you've got guns, that's when they're going to come along and try to have them removed. So, you know, I, I still can't tell you stay in the States if you have a choice. If you have a choice, you need to fit the guck out. And start thinking tactically and stop asking each other to go out and kill white folks to prove themselves and then come back and tell you they did it. Stop, stop doing what that. If you're going to do something like that, you don't tell anybody before and you don't tell anyone after. End of story. I hope this has been a benefit. Black heart, black mind, blackout.